so good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Francisco Brasileiro. I'm with the Federal University of Campina Grande in Brazil. Together with uh, Andre, we're going to present uh, a work uh, that we've done at the university to easy the task of, of people that have a bag of task application and want to run them on the cloud. So a, a bit of the outline of the presentation. We start with, with a bit of a motivation for uh, uh, the work. Uh, we, we show how, what's involved in managing the execution of a bag of task applications. Then we show how the Arubo system uh, is uh, designed. Uh, then uh, we show how we can connect Bootplow clouds uh, using uh, this uh, middleware called Fogball. And uh, in between these uh, two uh, parts, we are going to show small uh, demonstrations of uh, the systems in action. And then we open for questions. So many science applications. Uh, I don't know how many of you were in the previous uh, presentation where uh, people from the University of Melbourne have uh, said that 9% of the uh, jobs that they received in their HPC system uh, was for one core. Uh, uh, so these are uh, very popular applications where uh, the, co the, the, the computation, uh, the size of the computation comes from the fact that you have to run many small uh, computations. Uh, and this can be very easily parallelized. Uh, the other thing is that uh, they come in sporadic demand. So uh, for instance, in a university, uh, two months before the deadline of a conference, there are researchers using the, the, the computing uh, facilities to, to get the experiments, uh, the results of their experiments. But after the paper is submitted, there is a, a time where they sleep, they eat, they do other things. Uh, and uh, so you don't have that much demand from, their, uh, from that uh, specific group of users. So this kind of... Uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, the faster you can run this uh, scientific application, the better, because you can in increase the, uh, speed up the, the cycle of uh, research uh, development, since you can run uh, faster your experiments, you can analyze the data, uh, uh, the data will be ready for analysis uh, earlier, so you can uh, plan a new set of experiments and run uh, a, a new set of experiments. So uh, the time to, uh, here is not the time to market, but it's the time to paper is uh, uh, reduced uh, if, you, if you have a lot of, of resources available. The cloud is a nice uh, setting to run this application because uh, uh, theoretically uh, it's the same cost. Uh, if you use the same amount of computing power, it, it doesn't matter if you do that in one hour or in one year. Uh, you were paying uh, the, same, the same bill. So uh, if you have loads uh, of resources available, you, might, you, you may be able to run your application much, much, uh, uh, much faster. OK, so what a typical user has to do to, to run a bag of task application in the cloud? So the user is sitting there uh, on, on his or her uh, workstation uh, and has uh, access to a, to a cloud service. So it has to create a VM. Then it has to stage uh, input files in this uh, VM. Then it has to SSH to the VM to start uh, the remote execution. Then it needs to monitor this execution from time to time. And finally, when the output is uh, ready, you have to retrie retrieve the output data. And uh, if in, in a public cloud you want to destroy the VM, in a private cloud it would be nice to do that as well, but uh, some people don't. So it's, this is quite time consuming, and you have to do that for thousands of, uh, of course, you have to automate 
uh, this procedure. And this is essentially what the Arhabo uh, service does. So we have a service that runs in the same uh, administrative domain uh, of the user and, and the cloud service. Uh, so what the user does is simply to submit a job uh, through a command line interface to this Arbo uh, service. So what is a, a job? Uh, a job is uh, a file that describes uh, the tasks that need to, that belong to that uh, bag of task application. Normally, uh, this file will have hundreds or thousands of blocks like this one where the only thing that changes is the input file and the output file. So normally you will have some, some script that will automatically generate this uh, job file. It has also some other uh, clauses that can be used. You have the label to name your file, the requirements for the uh, resources that uh, you will need uh, from the, cl the cloud, these are uh, commands that should be executed before any of these uh, tasks. So when you create the, uh, when you access the, uh, the resource in the cloud, the first thing you do is to, to run what's in the init part of this uh, job. Then you run tasks, and after each task, you run the final part. So it's pretty straightforward uh, what the user has to do. After submitting the job to the Ahebo service, then the user needs just to wait for the results to appear uh, on, its, uh, on, on the desktop. So what the Ahebo service does is uh, it creates the infrastructure, it stages the input data, it uh, starts the execution of the task, monitors uh, the execution of this task, if a task fails for whatever reason, then it, can be, uh, it will be automatically restarted. And then when the outputs are ready, the airball uh, fetches the, uh, the output. And most importantly, it destroys uh, the VMs. So we'll shift gears here, and I passed over to Andre that will show how this uh, works. Uh, in action. Okay, so here in this first demo, I'm going to show you how Hebo is used to automate the task of submitting um, a lot of smaller tasks to the cloud. And I hope you can at least have an idea of what is being showed here. So what happens here is that we have a, a job description file, just like Fubika said. And in this job description file, we have um, five simple tasks. And the tasks here are just sleeping for some time. So it's the simplest task you could have. And after you get the task, the, the tasks described in the job file, what you would have you is that you would submit this job file to the Ahabo service. And here we're using the command line client. And before it completes, let me show you that the, this virtual machines here were already there. And in a few seconds, a few other virtual machines will be created uh, from the Ahabo service. So let's change to the Ahabo dashboard, log in, then we were able to see the job, click on the job, and then the, here it has already interpreted the job file, detected the tasks that will need to be executed, and now what happens is that it will start creating the VMs that will execute those tasks. And then, if we wait for a few seconds, so this video is a, a bit faster than regular speed, the tasks are now ready, and the instances will be created in the 
uh, Horizon interface. So you see five instances have been created. Um, then if we go back to the Ahibao dashboard, we'll be able to see that the tasks will start running soon. Okay, so now they're running. They're running those five VMs that were created. And next, what's going to happen is that when the execution finishes, then the VMs will be um, deleted. So one thing that the user may want is that the VMs be kept after the task is completed, because then if you submit a new set of tasks, what happens is that you can reuse the machines that are already on, and that would reduce the, the overhead of the initial provisioning. So now the tests are completed, and the machines will be slowly um, deleted. Okay, so Fubika, maybe you want to detail a little bit more about the fumble. I think, well, the, so all, all is nice, but the problem is uh, the user has a quota in the cloud. So I want to run my 200 simulation, but I can only spawn five uh, VMs. So I'd rather spawn 200 VMs and run all the simulations at the same time. So uh, we need to find a way to increase the capacity that I, can, uh, that I am able uh, to reach. Uh, so this is true even in the public cloud scenario, because uh, out of the uh, counter, uh, the number of, of virtual machines that you can create, even in a public cloud, is limited. And this is because it facilitates the long-term capacity planning of these uh, providers. So capacity can be extended in several ways. Uh, one way is using a multi cloud, so you have access to several public clouds and uh, you, uh, you create VMs in all those uh, public clouds. Uh, another one is uh, cloud bursting. So I have my private cloud, and uh, when I uh, exhaust my, uh, the limit of the number of uh, resources that I can, I can use in my quota, I could uh, jump to uh, the public cloud. I could federate private cloud. So the idea is, uh, remember that uh, this kind of workload is very ephemeral, so people will, so I will submit my 1,000 tasks uh, job, but then I will stay quiet for a couple of weeks uh, digesting the data of that uh, uh, experiment. Uh, meanwhile, my quota in, in, in the cloud would be uh, available for the people to, to use. So we could do a, a kind of exchange of uh, quotas in a federated cloud in order to be able to access more resources at the same time. Uh, and of course you can do combinations of uh, all, all of this, that stuff. So in Campina Grande uh, at the WebCG we have also uh, developed uh, a middleware called Fogbo. Uh, in fact it's a suite of uh, open source uh, software that does uh, different things, and among them, uh, it provides support for multiple, uh, for multi clouds, for cloud bursting, and for federating uh, private clouds. Uh, in the demo that uh, we are going to show in a minute, uh, we are going to focus on the federation of uh, private clouds. Uh, Fogbo also gives support to the deployment of uh, opportunistic uh, clouds using uh, desktops. That is particularly suitable to this kind of bag of task application, but we're not going to talk much about this uh, today. So I think we can move to, to the demos so that you, you have an idea of uh, how the system works, and then I will explain the internals of the system. Oh, no. That's the video. Just the live. No, no, it's it's the video. Not today. Okay, so again, what we have here is the, 
The terminal that I will use to submit a job composed of several tasks. And because this time the process is a little bit different because the Ahebol service will contact the Fogbo service that federates two private clouds. It's useful for us to take a look also <coughs> at the Fogbo dashboard. And the Fogbo dashboard here is showing that there is a user logged in, which is the Ahebol service. And we logged in as a user so that we could see in the UI the things that the service is doing in the background. Uh, in a summary, this user has access to 56 vCPUs, 36 gigabytes of RAM, and 67 uh, instances. And these resources are spread into two different private clouds. So we have one here that is, um, it's a bit difficult to see, but it end, ends with rnp.br, and the other ends with ufcgedu.br. And if you look at these columns here at this table, this table is showing the quota and the usage of the current Fogbo uh, eyeball service user. And here we can see that uh, this user has zero instances in the rnp.br cloud, and it also has zero instances in the ufcg.edu.br cloud. And we can also see that there is uh, additional instances here. So there are three instances in this uh, UFCG cloud. These are the same instances that were already running uh, in the previous demo. So let's take a look now at the job. So here I'm showing you again. The, so there are no instances being created in, in Fogbo at this moment. So there are the same three instances in uh, Horizon, which are the same three instances that were there at the beginning of the previous experiment. And let me show you the, the job file. So the job file this time has 15 tasks, and these 15 tasks have a larger sleep time. So now I put here 75 seconds because we needed a bit more time to be able to access uh, VMs in a different clouds, which, which take a bit more. Otherwise, all the, all the tasks would run in the local cloud and then we wouldn't show what we want to show. Could not be a, a good demo. So again, using the CLI client to submit the job. And OK. Then we can change back to the Ahebol dashboard. Log in, see that there is a job pending. Okay, so here we see that the job has uh, around 15 tasks. The 15 tasks are ready to run, so it means that in a few seconds the instances will start being created. So let's go back to the Fogbo dashboard. And here we see something that it's interesting. So the way that the Fogbo service works is through asynchronous requests. And what you see here is that the Ahebo service requested 15 instances. And we know already from the previous demo that there would be not enough space to create the 15 instances in the local cloud, so the UFCG cloud, because the three existing instances have already used a large amount of memory. And as the VMs are being created, the orders will be fulfilled. Okay, so four instances created. Now seven instances have been created. And one other interesting thing is that it will prioritize the execution in the local cloud, as we would expect. So what you can, what you could see here, if it was a little bit better to read, would be that all this instance ID, they have the name of the cloud embedded in it. So this one is maybe a bit easier to read. The instance ID ends with uscg.edu.br. And this uh, eight, Instances were created in the, the local cloud, but I have all requested 15 
instances as you saw on the previous uh, order page. So then the Fogball will help creating the additional instances, but let's take a look here at the local cloud. So Horizon, uh, the instances have been created in the local cloud, so eight instances. And if we update the page, then we would be able to see that the additional instances, so the seven additional instances have been created in a different cloud. So if you cannot read the name, at least you can see that these names are longer than these other ones because they are in the, they use the other cloud name, which ends with rmp.br. So I have seven additional VMs here. And now that the VMs are created, we would be able to see here in the usage page that the, the eyeball service user is using its quota. So here we can see uh, the UFCG cloud. So it has 11 instances in total, but eight for the current user, which is the eyeball service user. And we see that with these eight instances, we have already reached the RAM quota. So that's why it could not create the 15 instances. And the other seven instances were created in this cloud here, which is the remote cloud. So now we have our 15 instances to execute the 15 uh, tasks. The tasks will be running soon. Okay, so we have one running. Uh, let's update, and then we have a few more running. So they are running in the VMs that were created both in the local cloud and the remote cloud. And now some tasks are already being completed because it was not a very, a very long sleep. So if we take a look here at the instances, we we'll see that some of the instances are already being terminated. Okay, so one configuration that the user could play with is that the, the instance could be held uh, but here for this demo, it's better not to use that. So when the, there, there are no ready tasks, the instance will be finished as soon as the tasks are completed. Should be very soon, yes. So now we have all the tasks completed and then it's just a matter of seconds to have all the instances deleted. So here you see in the dashboard from Fogbo that all the instances that have been created through Fogbo have been finished. And we could also go to Horizon and refresh the page and see that all the instances created in the local cloud have also been uh, deleted. Just the three original instances have been kept. So that's, that's it for the second demo. Right. Could, uh, well, what I'm going to do now uh, in the next five minutes before we move to questions is to speak a little bit what's going on uh, behind the, under the, he's sabotaging my, Okay. Right. So, how does uh, Fogball work? So, the idea is that we are building uh, a layer uh, on top of the of the cloud orchestrator. Uh, to deal with all the only with the federation aspects of the of the problem, so uh, essentially we have two services: one that uh, implements a, a discovery service, so it's this membership manager here, and an allocation manager that uh, interfaces the the other uh, uh, the, the users with the with the federation. 
Uh, one thing that uh, we didn't mention in the, in, in the demo is that those two clouds, they use different uh, cloud uh, middleware. So the UFCG one uses OpenStack, while the RNP one uses CloudStack. So uh, in, through Fogbow, uh, Fogbow provides an OCCI uh, API, so the uh, Arbol services uses this uh, OCCI API to interact with uh, uh, any uh, cloud orchestrator in a transparent way. In fact, we can, we can also uh, use uh, settings where we have uh, cloud bursting in, in, in private cloud. We, we have uh, adapters that uh, will work with the Azure and uh, AWS as well. So, uh, the first thing uh, uh, that uh, one of the main uh, services that the Fogbo uh, layer provides is, the, uh, is a service for the Federation of uh, Identities. Uh, the, uh, the service works in, in, in layers, so uh, at the Federation layer, uh, a local request uh, will come with the federation credentials. These uh, credentials are uh, authenticated and, and authorized uh, at the appropriate service, and this service can be uh, configured. For instance, uh, that cloud that uh, uh, we showed uh, uses um, a federation of uh, LDAP uh, uh, providers, but we have implementations with VOMS, uh, which is a uh, People, anybody from the grid, European grid initiative there? Well, never mind. Uh, uh, and uh, another one that works with uh, Shibo. So the, the deployment that we are doing with the Brazilian and REN uh, uses uh, the federation of identities that they, they run that's based on, on uh, Shibo uh, implementation. Uh, so these uh, are authenticated and uh, authorized at the federation level, and then you have a mapping to uh, a credential on your local cloud. And this credential is the one that is used to access the cloud. Uh, so what you make available to the federation, to the different users, will be defined by this mapping. Uh, as we've seen, uh, there is a possibility to send res uh, requests that cannot be fulfilled locally to a remote cloud. And at the ro remote cloud, you go through the same uh, uh, authorization and authentication uh, process with an, uh, uh, the addition that you also have the uh, credentials of the Fogbo manager that is sending uh, the request, so that's sending the request over, so you can use uh, this information as well to define how you map or even if you are going to allow uh, that user to, to use your resources. Uh, an important thing is that mapping is, is defined in an autonomous way by each uh, cloud administrator. So that's why we call a federation. It's that uh, uh, there are some rules that everybody uh, needs to follow, but there are rules that each member of the federation uh, may uh, have the flexibility to, to define. The mapping is one of those. Uh, the middleware that you use to operate your cloud is another one. Uh, Fogbo was conceived to, to be uh, easily extensible. So we, we, the architecture is based on plugins, and we have two kinds of plugins. Uh, one family of plugins uh, is the interoperability plugins, and, and it's in charge of uh, uh, allowing Fogbo to communicate with the underlying cloud. So if you want to uh, uh, provide su uh, Fogbo support to a new middleware, what you have to do is to develop the uh, interoperability plugins for that uh, middleware. And the behavior plugins change the way your node in the federation uh, behaves. For instance, you can change the way you prioritize 
uh, the allocation of uh, remote resources. So one site might follow one policy, while another site uh, follows a different one. Uh, the other thing that uh, we, we took care was the, to deal with the fact that in, this private, in, in some of the private clouds that we, we needed to, to put in the federation uh, that uh, drove our, our development uh, is that they don't offer public IPs. Uh, so they are private clouds, so they don't need to, to offer uh, public IPs to every VM that was uh, created. So we created a, a tunneling service that automatically provides a public IP to every uh, VM that is uh, created in the private cloud. Another thing that uh, we use is a messaging service to, to allow all these components to uh, exchange messages without having to open strange ports in your uh, firewall. So this is uses in our current implementation, XMPP. Uh, next one. Well, some success stories. Uh, so uh, Fogbo was f developed in the context of a, a project that was jointly funded by the Brazilian government through the CNPQ uh, agency and the European Commission. Uh, and uh, in, in that context, the idea was to join clouds in Brazil with clouds in Europe. The clouds in Brazil was running, were running uh, OpenStack, while the clouds in uh, Europe uh, were running Open Nebula. Uh, these uh, clouds uh, also belong to, e to the EGI uh, Federation, so there are some uh, services that the European partners wanted to use, for instance, this uh, uh, VO management system uh, that they use. So we developed the uh, behavior plugins uh, in Fogball to allow the federation to use this uh, federated service. Uh, another case that we are currently uh, deploying in Brazil uh, is with the Brazilian NREN. Uh, the idea is to federate clouds in several institutions in, uh, across the, the country. Uh, and these clouds use uh, at least three different uh, flavors of orchestrator, CloudStack and OpenStack being a uh, tool of them. Uh, we are using, uh, as I said before, uh, a federation called CAFE for the identity uh, provision at the uh, federation level, and uh, this was the cloud that we used in the in the demos that we showed before. And I think I conclude the talk with that, and I'm open to questions if you have any. Uh, I was told that they are recording, so if you want to make a question, if you can come closer to the uh, microphone, so that the the question will also be recorded, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Um, what do you do if your token expires? I mean, the Arabolt service user acts on your behalf, yes, but does it actually create new tokens? Does it, does it cache your credentials as well, or does it just use the token, and then uh, when that expires, are you, are you unable to create new um, bag of task VMs? Or? You mean? The, when, the federated when, token that, um, as a user, you authenticate to. Well, to it, your depends, it depends. It depends. How are you talking about VOMs or well, any token? It was the federated acts authorization and um, authentication token. I think it was um, a few slides back. So the uh, Fogbo authenticates to the cloud. So Fogbo has credentials to the cloud and you may have credentials to Fogbo. So there could be different levels of authentications and different tokens in use. That's what he was asking. So in any case that you're using Fogbo, Fogbo has its own means to authenticate together with the cloud. So it can continue working on it, whether your authentication with Fogbo has expired or not. I, I, Is I that think more I, or less what you're asking? I think the question was, if I create a VM and uh, during the lifetime of my VM, my 
uh, someone changes my my credential in such a way that I, I couldn't I wouldn't be able to create that uh, that VM. Yeah. Or this if the token that you used to create that VM then expired because it was so old. But I don't need that token any longer. Once the VM is given to the user, it has a VM and uh, SSH to the VM, and the token is no longer needed. Okay, so, so all of the VMs that are created are created at the first moment, and... Um, no, no, no. Uh, right, yes, and anyway, the, the VMs do still need to be deleted, so you still need the, the access to right. do the, this, and that's done in the context of Fogball, when, if you're using Fogball. Okay, thank you. I mean, when, when, when you need to create the VM, you're, you need to have the authorization to do so. After that, uh, we don't, uh, it's like opening a file. Uh, if you open a file and uh, you have the, the rights to, to, to read the file, and you keep the file open and someone goes there and change that uh, permission so that you can't read, you will still be able to read the file as long as you have the handle to the, to the file. So it's a similar kind of uh, situation. So it, it, it's a breach, but okay. what, what you can do is uh, you could have a service at your cloud that would uh, periodically uh, access if all the, but we don't do that. Any other questions? Um, so I'm Samuel. I have a question about um, how the scheduler works. In the case I have, like in the demo, we have two clouds, and we had ordered 15 VMs, and some of the VMs uh, needed to be created on the other cloud, right? Um, what if I have more than one um, remote cloud? How can I define the behavior that, let's say, I want to balance that, like? half go to the second cloud, and the other half goes to the third cloud? Uh, currently, we have a very naive uh, uh, scheduler in, in our ball uh, that simply uh, passes your job, uh, assesses the amount of uh, resources that are needed to run uh, that job, and sends the orders to, to Fogball. And uh, as the resources uh, appear, it uses whatever resources is there as uh, making no differentiation between them. Our plan is uh, for the Arbo service to, w when submitting your job, you might also submit uh, a scheduler uh, together. Yeah, exactly, so because you may have different contracts with different remote clouds. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and even different applications might have uh, different uh, Needs. ways to, to, to schedule the, the, the tasks. This is just a proof of concept to show that, uh, uh, in fact, what, what we wanted with our ball was uh, we developed this uh, federation middleware, uh, and uh, we showcased that everybody was very happy with that, so we wanted to, to have users into the, uh, this federation to, to, to use it, and uh, bag of tests seemed to be the easiest way to get people uh, on board. So the eyeball is just a, a facilitator for people to, to join in uh, the federation without much uh, uh, work, to, uh, yeah. with a, a, a slow, uh, I mean, not steep uh, learning curve. Yeah, that makes sense. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Um, can I? I came in late, so I might I didn't miss the first part. But can I assume that um, Fogball is federating instances, right? It federates create cre instant creation, VM creation from you know different clouds. The federation federation it can be different levels, right? Mm -hmm. You federate identity, mm -hmm. you federate mm -hmm. your cloud so that you can share resource like this one, which is basic, this resource is basically just pure instances, VMs, right. and yeah. nothing else. We, we, can, we can also federate, we can also, well, 
what we do is uh, with Fogbo allows you to have access to a number of clouds in the federation uh, to create basic resources. What, what are these basic resources? You can create VMs, you mm -hmm. can create volumes, mm -hmm. and you create, uh, can create uh, networks mm -hmm. within a single cloud. For instance, I cannot yet uh, create a VM at one uh, provider, a volume in another provider, and attach this. Uh, we have done that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've yeah. seen, I've yeah. seen, I've seen the, so, the Massachusetts. Yeah, uh, open cloud. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I would love to. I would be in, really interested in you know getting that. But in any case, so one of the thing that, um, so you, what kind of federation, like w when they came in, you have already have, you know, multiple. Uh, clouds up and then you have, you know, resource assigned to it. Is there any special schedule that does that or you, this is all manual, like this cloud will have only this kind of resource? Okay. You, you mean because there are already instances in that project? No, yes, uh, like examples. The first cloud can only have like, you know, 10 um, limit number of instances that can be starting up. And the second cloud would have 20. Do you have some sort of schedule for that? Or how do you, s yeah, that's, yeah. Well, I'm going live now, so. I'm not responsible for what to <laughs> <laughs> So this is the, the um, federation, the, the, the Brazilian and REN uh, uh, federation. Uh, so we have those two clouds and uh, a catch-all uh, cloud for people that don't. Uh, so we, we have uh, one of the, 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 the models, the business models that we use in this cloud is that you have the notion of your local cloud and you have priorities over the resources on the local cloud and then you can cloud burst to other clouds. Uh, and uh, you get priority on the other clouds based on how much resources you offered uh, along the time to the other clouds. Right, I think the concept, that concept, I mean, do you teach how Fogbo knows that this pool would have this kind of resource? Do you manually type in it? No, 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 it, it uh, uh, perhaps you, you uh, hang on. We may be running yeah. out of time. I'm just, uh, so this component here is the one that does all the interactions with the, with the cloud, but there is this component here that implements uh, a dis uh, directory. Got it. Got it. So this is the one that, uh, and, and the, that information that appears in the dashboard is uh, user dependent. Like I logged in as a, uh, a certain user, and then the resources that are made available for me depending on my credentials. So you might log in in the same system and you will have different. Uh, okay. And this is all based on the mapping that is done at each local cloud. Right. So the administrator of this cloud defines yeah. how much resources I can access, how many, uh, how many resources you can access, and, and this uh, service gotcha. puts all together, okay? okay? Uh, I think we are running uh, late. Uh, we'll be around, so if you have questions, uh, we would love to, to talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.